So Allah has sent the ayah telling the wife of Rasul Sallallahu that if you want this dunya Fata Alayna, you come. I will give you everything. If you're looking for gold, if you're looking for jewelry, you give you everything, I will give it to you. If you want this dunya. But if you want Allah, what a if you fall in love with the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deen, Allah religion, and if you fall in love with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you come so we can practice this religion, we invite people to religion, you people will be the mothers of all the believers. Before the Rasul finished reciting, because he really brought this verse and tell the Rasul, and before Rasul finished reciting that to them, all of them started weeping. They said, We repent to Allah, and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, please forgive us. When I'm driving here, a Rasul told them, From today, I'm a Rasul. I'm not the king of Israel. I'm not I'm the king of Rome. I'm the prophet. And the tradition, all the prophets, all the, in, in, the, the messengers that came, we supposed to live simple life, not luxury life. So from today, the door is open. Those who want to live, re, re, I mean, uh, uh, enjoying life, please, you can go ahead, go. But if you want to live with me, you have to live with my standards. That's the first incident. The second incident happened. Subhanallah, this is very emotional. Anytime I, I, I say this story, it can really make me set tear. A Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa just got married to Aisha, Umar Mu'minin. There a young lady married to a Rasul, the Prophet of Allah. And she was the youngest one. And she is the daughter of Abu Bakr as siddiq Abu Bakr Siddiq left his house in Medina and go, he went to go visit his daughter. To Abu Bakr's biggest surprise, while Abu Bakr standing at the door, he overheard his daughter yelling and repeating Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasul said now like this. She yelling. So, in short, I go back for the door and I spoke to So, I go back and see you. My daughter, what's your problem? Do you know who you're talking to? You yell at the Rasul, you raise your voice at the Rasul. Do you know who you're talking to? The Rasul said, Now, quietly. Abu Bakr couldn't control himself. He rushed to Aisha. He wants to slap her in the face. At this point, Rasul stood up and grabbed Abu Bakr here. You are not beating my wife. Aisha is Abu Bakr's daughter. And Abu Bakr said, Ya Umur Ruman. And you know our tradition. If the woman do something bad, if your daughter do something bad, you will say, bad woman, daughter. In my language, in my dad, dad they say, so you talking to Rasul like this? And after Rasul intervened, Abu Bakr felt guilty, and he put his hand down, 
der hier Asra so kennt, der mit mir zu lief. Ich left. He went home, but because his heart was broken, he came back to knock at the door. And he came, the atmosphere changed. Rasul and his wife giggling, laughing. So Abu Bakr said, Rasul, can you allow me to be part of your family when there is a peace? Like the same way I enter your house when there was a war? Rasul said, you are very welcome. So this is the, one of the incidents. I have to reiterate right here. If this can happen to Rasul, who talk to the angel, who Allah has sent in the revelation, who they describe as after al-Bashar, if this one can happen to him, what's about you and myself? That's one of the lessons as a student, that's what I learned from there. The second one, uh, in this kind of community that we live, if there's a confusion between the man and the woman, the first day, the parents of the woman will come and sit there down and say, okay, you're sitting on this call, you tell us what happened. You the man, what happened? Why you get our daughter? Some of them will come, they want to even cuss you up. Some of them will, will want to beat you up because there is a confusion between you and their daughter. Or versa versa. So the lesson I learned, Abu Bakr, who a Rasul Sallallahu say that, Alaykum bi sunnati, wa sunnat al kulafa al rashidin al mahadiyid. If the day I'm not existing, ma kulafa al rashidun, you should follow the sunnah. Abu Bakr is the first one. So if this is what Abu Bakr can do, what's up with you and myself? We learn a lot of lessons from these two incidents. And we should guard according to them. Having said that, I would like to take the first Kutba uh, break. Nafani Allahu wa iyaqum bi hali kitabihi wa ta'alani wa iyaqum min man yastamikuna al-qawla fa yattabi'una ahsan. Just briefly, for the second khutbah, because of the time factor, uh, I would like to give five, five practical tips for a blessed marriage. I, have, I, will, make it, I will summarize it. I will go over it first because we don't have a time. Um, in the marriage relationship, I'm not married therapy, but uh, I'm taking everything right here from the Quran and Sunnah. Uh, what I learned, the first thing in the marriage relationship, be it man or woman, think about the good thing about your partner, your spouse, instead of you thinking about the negative one. If you say this woman, she's bad. I can't stand her. She can't respect me. On the other hand, she gets one positive one. You can accept her without one. She very caring for her kids. Despite she got a negative one, but she care for her kids. She care for your family. She cook your food. She born your children. In the time you think about her negativity, think about the positive part. And I think all of us can ponder into that in your own way. When you go home, see the woman, hey, him or me is him or me. Excuse me. Sometimes she, 
that's for nature. You go east, you will go west. You commit to, to be like a husband wife. So you should expect so many things. You the woman too. You were born east, your husband was born west. Please, you're not going to change that man overnight. But for the sake of the marriage, for the sake of the children, please bear his negativity. Look at the positive one. This man, you know, he's so picky, he's like this. But at the same time, this man is holding the family together. You should accept the man for that one. That's the first one. I don't want to stress it too bad. Uh, the second one, Allah has said, forgive your partner. Whatever your wife do to you, whatever your husband do to you, learn how to forgive each other. We are human. If she wrong you, Allah has said, wa in ta'afu wa tas'afu wa ta'khfiru fa inna Allah ha'afuru rahim. Forgive each other. This is not going to be the end of the world. She wrong you today. Hey, if you continue to forgive her, time will come, she will come to herself. But this is the instruction for Allah that we should forgive each other. Whatever she did in the past, forgive that. Whatever she's going to do right now, forgive it. She knows what she's doing wrong. Nobody is a baby. But if you forgive her, or you forgive him, you should know that that means you want to put this, you want to continue with this marriage. That's the second one. This, the third one, like I said, the incident of Rasul, things happen. You will try by all means, you forgive her, but still she's taking your face, she's yelling at you, she cussing you out. Sometimes she, you know, she do whatever she want to do. Found, I could have now tell us that we should do what? We should compromise. Compromise is like when Ukraine and Russia are fighting, time will come, they will sit up on the negotiation table, they will discuss. And they will discussion. Say, so, honey, this is what happened. This is the only thing I can't take it from you. I mean, how best we can able to do this? The husband can tell the wife, the wife can tell the husband. You have to see that among yourself. That compromise, there's no tension, there's nothing impossible when the children sleep before you sit down on the negotiation table. Okay, honey, please forgive me. I will not do that again. That compromise is very, very important in our marriage life. The fourth one, which Rasul Sassama practices so many times, Try to find a quality time with a spouse. One time, a Rasul was coming for the trip. He and the Sahaba, he got soldiers, how many thousand of people they have armed and just coming from war. Uh, when they reached to the suburb of Medina, a Rasul told them, you know what, uh, you go, you go to Medina. You know, it's not far from here. We are in the suburb right now. But you'll leave me and my wife, uh, Aisha, will stay here. And Aisha, when she came, she was very old before she passed away. She, she was narrating that, that that quality time she and Rasul were spending together. There is no 